Oh, sorry, action. <laughs> Welcome to the Champagne Spot with me, Miss Champagne B. And today we're going to focus on the basics of wine tasting. So again, we're all new to this journey. I don't know a lot of the sommeliers out there, but I will share with you the things that I have read, I have learned, that I have put into place. So first, you want to start off with a clean glass. You want to make sure that your glass is completely clean, free of any type of smells, debris, anything that will throw off the taste of the wine. Another thing, you hear that? You don't hear anything but bugs. It's very important that you're in a place where it's kind of not so loud because you want to focus on the flavors and the scent and the experience of the wine taste. Try to go to a place where there's not too much noise. What we are drinking is a Cooper's Hawk, another wine from Cooper's Hawk because I will explore them. My goal is to try every wine. So. Today we have the Sangria White, and this is what we're going to use to test for our tasting today. Get a load of that beautiful chilled. You want to make sure that your wine has a nice chill to it. You don't want to make sure that it's too cold, that you'll miss all the notes and the flavors. Um, in the event that it is too cold, you can actually hold your glass in the palm of your hand to kind of warm it up a little bit, to kind of release the smells and the aroma. Um, drinking wine is about the experience, the, the whole entire experience. So you want to look at it, you want to sniff it, and you want to taste it. You also want to think about when you're tasting it, some of the flavors that you might experience. What type of vegetable you take. Yeah, people do put vegetables in wine. I don't know why they, they didn't do it, we'll learn later. Um, the fruits, if there's, if there's a scent of flowers, <laughs> you'll, you'll hear that, or you'll, I'm sorry, you'll smell that. Um, and you want to make sure that you have a complete wine, something full bodied and just like like a, a dance of, of magical fairies just running around on your tongue. That's what I imagine a good wine tastes. So now we're going to pop it up with magic. And presto, there we go. So first, we want to take it, and remember, we want to check all the sights or all the senses of wine tasting. Sight, smell, and taste. So first, we're only going to put about, fill up your glass one third. People feel the need to fill all the way to the top, but you don't do that. That's not how you taste things. That's how you get drunk, baby, and I'm here for it. But right now, we're going to taste. So you want to swish it around. And this is how you can see, looking at the legs of it, what, what kind of density of alcohol and the sugar content. The sweeter it is, the more sugar add is added. Um, I'm still learning about legs though. In theory, <laughs> these legs are supposed to tell you something. I don't know yet, but I will put it in my um, blog to tell you more about what wine legs are. So you wanna look at it, you wanna look at the color, make sure that there isn't any strict streaks or you know, discoloration, make sure it's all the way through, make sure it's clear. There's no seeds or some type of remnants of the process of, of it becoming a wine. And for the most part, I don't, I don't even say for the most part, it is clear. And then you want to smell it. You want to try to smell some of the um, notes in it. Um, you don't want to put your nose in your glass because it's gross and a boogie might fall into your drink. And then you're a boogie drinker and everybody's like, look at you, you, you don't want that but you just hoover over it like a helicopter. And when you, this also releases this, when you're swishing it around. Some people can do it really well, but you know, we're, we're new, so we're just gonna give it a little bit. But this allows it to aerate a bit more as well to release more of that fragrance and those flavors. Sip it. Okay, this is what I think I'm smelling. Apricot. Have I ever smelled? <laughs> I feel like I, I feel like I know what an apricot smell like, but I'm gonna go with apricot, peach, and some grapes. Now I'm gonna go and look at the ingredients and post on my blog to see how many of them I actually got right. So now I'm gonna take a sip, not a swallow, not the whole damn bottle. 
but just a little sip and when you sip it try to suck it a little bit <laughs> but try to suck it and when you're sucking it bring in some of that air as you suck it because again it gives more um, it allows you to aerate the wine a bit more which again goes to the whole flavor and senses and everything so let's try it I feel like grapes and apricot that's where I'm gonna go with so you want to switch it around your tongue and as you know your tongue has like four spots with salty sweet sour camera guy I know you know this one salty sweet sour. <laughs> it might be it but your tongue has four different tastes of two different sections so like your sour is in the front your salty is on the side <laughs> your sweet is on the back so each part of your tongue has a different function so when you take the wine, you swish it all over your tongue and trying to call out those different sweet or different tastes. So for this, this is a sweet wine, maybe even a dessert wine. I don't know, I'm still learning which dessert and what's not. I might I might have to take another sip for research purposes. Yep. That's that, that's that apricot. I'm not gonna know for sure until I finish the whole bottle. So I'm gonna go ahead, take this with me and finish it. What you're going to do is subscribe, like, and check out my blog for more tips on wine tasting. Again, this is Miss Champagne B, and you're at the Champagne Spot. See ya.